Mrs. Rock, I'm so glad you're here today. Are you ready to create? Well, what should we make today? Hmm. Oh, I know. Today, let's make an origami monarch butterfly. Get ready. Here are the materials you're going to need today. The kind of technique we're using today is called origami. It's the Japanese art of paper folding. To make your origami butterfly, you're going to need a piece of paper. I'm just using a piece of printer paper, but you could use something reused, like some old math worksheets or a piece of construction paper or even some junk mail. Just know that if you do use a piece of construction paper, it's a little bit more difficult to fold because the paper is a little thicker. But whatever paper you're using, you're gonna need to go from a rectangle to a square. A square is a shape with four equal sides. So I'm gonna do that by taking one corner of my paper and folding it so that this short side of the paper meets this long side. And when you're folding origami, you really wanna make sure that your edges are lining up as best you can and that you have a nice crisp crease. Now, how am I gonna get this shape to a square? Well, I'm just gonna cut this piece off. So when we open this up, we've got ourselves a square. In origami, there are folds called mountains that go up like a mountain, and folds that go down like a valley. We're looking at one valley fold on our paper. So now we're gonna take one of these corners of our valley and fold it over to meet the other. And like I said before, you wanna make sure your edges are lining up nice and neat. And I'm making a nice crisp crease by running my fingers along the edge. Now I'm gonna open it back up again. So now I'm looking at two valley folds. Next, I'm gonna take this piece of paper and flip it over. So now I'm looking at two mountain folds. I'm gonna take one edge of my paper and fold it over so it meets the other side. I'm gonna open it back up again, rotate it and fold it so that I end up with a crease across the middle here. and then I'm gonna open it back up again. The next thing I do is I take my hand, place it under my paper, and pop my paper up, and I'm going to grab these two corners and slowly, oops, slowly put them together so it starts to look like the letter X. Do you see the letter X? I'm gonna grab these two sides of the X, these two sides, and make it nice and flat so I'm looking at a triangle. I'm gonna take this triangle and turn it over so that it's pointing towards me. Then I'm gonna take just one of these corners. See how there's two corners here? I'm not taking both of them, just one of them and I'm going to aim this corner for this spot here. So I might need to use my other fingers to kind of help my paper along, but I'm gonna to aim towards that corner, but I'm not gonna fold it quite yet. I'm just gonna pivot it a little bit to the side so that I end up with a crease that goes from here to here. So I aim for here, but I'm actually going over here and I'm going to fold it nice and flat like that so that I end up with a crease right here. This is gonna be one of the bottom wings of my butterfly. Because my butterfly is symmetrical, that means the same on both sides, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side for the other bottom wing. And give it a nice crisp crease like that. Is my cat symmetrical? 
Next, I'm gonna take this whole thing and turn it over. And I'm gonna take this point here and I'm gonna aim for about this point up here. That's about a finger width above the top of my paper. So I'm gonna take this point, and again, I need my other fingers as helpers to help me move that paper so that I can reach that point way up here. At this point, I don't wanna make a fold. What I'm gonna do is grab the whole thing. I'm gonna turn my origami over. So now I'm looking back at the side I was looking at before, and I'm gonna fold this triangle down and hold it in place. Notice I still haven't made a crease here. I wanna keep this part nice and curved. This next part can be a little bit tricky. I'm making one last fold, and this fold is gonna be kind of on this line of symmetry in the middle of my butterfly. So I'm gonna kind of dig my fingernail kind of into that middle spot and fold the whole butterfly in half. What I'm doing on the back side is giving it a good pinch on the back side, not necessarily here, but just where the head is so that when I open it, it stays in place. And there's my butterfly. And I printed out a picture of a monarch butterfly. I'm gonna observe what the actual butterfly looks like. And I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to drawing those details, all those veins and the colors and the spots, all those interesting natural patterns. So you could use a pencil first to start drawing all those details, but I'm just gonna go for it and use a Sharpie first. So I'm gonna draw those eyes first on the face of my butterfly. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest black. Next, I'm gonna draw the body. So I'm gonna move the face to the side for now and make kind of a long skinny V down to here. And this is gonna be the body of my monarch butterfly. Next, I observe that there are all these interesting shapes that kind of remind me of teardrop shapes or ovals. So I'm going to use my Sharpie to draw those on the wings. Whatever I draw on one side, I want to be sure and try to make it pretty similar on the other side. all done we're gonna add some color and remember if you're making a monarch butterfly you're going to need some oranges and some yellows or for any other kind of butterfly or moth do some research and figure out what colors you're going to need Of fun creating these origami butterflies with you today. Remember, when you're creating, the possibilities are endless. And now it's time for a joke. Why did the girl throw the butter out the window? She wanted to see a butter fly. Whoa. I was just reading about monarch butterflies. Did you know that every spring, adult monarch butterflies migrate north from Mexico and California and return in the fall?
that's two or 3,000 miles each way.